you once again beloved of my father i hope that the lord has been keeping you as he has been keeping me from the first time that we started talking to each other from the first time that we started dialoguing on issues of the word of god we found ourselves in the book of genesis and in the book of genesis chapter 1 we found that everything was becoming good the lord our god was in the business of creating out of nothing something that would make the world look a much better place. From nothingness, he found a place for something, speaking into space. And coming out of space was this new thing. And he would use his word to create. We found that in chapter 2, there was this introduction of human beings. In that chapter 2, it was as though it was a crowning act of the creation ceremony. We found that 
all these things were good and the Lord was pleased. The introduction of marriage, the introduction of the Sabbath. We found so many aspects. But in chapter 3, there was a sudden twist. As though it was a movie, as though it was a series, there was a sudden twist, a downing of the climax. We found a situation where there was a force that was found in the tree of good and evil. We found Eve moving to the tree, and after Eve had moved to the tree, we found that he, the devil heard her think aloud. We found a separation between a husband and wife. We found an opportunity of the devil as though it was an action movie. We found a situation where the, the Eve is now communicating with the, the devil at the tree because she knew a little bit of the truth. She then decided, no, I can handle this. We found that disaster after that. We entered into chapter 4 when Eve and Adam had been cast out of the Garden of Eden, the home that they had known, a home that was created for them. We find a situation. I can say they were in a situation ship. They, we find them in a situation, an entanglement of sorts. We find that Adam and Eve were thrown out of the house that was created from them, and they were pushed out of this garden. And at that point, they are fearing for themselves. They are regretting guilt, everything. And we find that she gives birth to a young man and another young man. The brothers grow up together, but we still find another situation. You see, the sin seems to be passing down the line. And we find Cain killing his brother. And after Cain kills his brother in chapter 4, he rudely says to God, Am I my brother's keeper? Should I be keeping my brother? And as we go down the line into chapter 5, we find that the age that man was supposed to live was forever and ever. But we find the age now will never increase again from Adam age started going down from Adam we lost the 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 vitality of life never ever think your one decision will not affect the next generations this brings us to chapter 6 and our sermon title is as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be when the son of man shall come Matthew 24 verse 37 says, Jesus gave a warning that he has a great meaning to us today. But as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And what do we learn from these events 4,000, 6,000 years ago? What were the days of Noah like? Moses wrote unto the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth. Every imagination of his thoughts and his heart were evil continually. Listen, evil continually. When the man slept, he dreamt evil. When he woke up, he thought evil. When he ate, he ate evil. When he was walking throughout the day, it was evil. Today, we find ourselves in a situation where people are thinking of evil continually. Sometimes you even get shocked how one man would have thought of such an evil. You find crimes that will, will, will bedazzle you. You find some sort of um, fornication and adultery that will bedazzle you. What time does human beings have to, to plan and plot some of the sins that we are in? And the Bible says they were sinful continually. Every, their whole imagination... Everything they desired, their very desire was evil. All they wanted to do all day, every day, throughout the year, was evil continually. Genesis 6, uh, 6 to 7 says, And it repented the Lord that he made man on earth and grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man beast, and every creeping thing, and the fowl of the air, for it repented me that I had made him. Listen, you need to understand something here. When the Lord was looking and he saw that things were good, he pronounced, this is good. When he made man, he said, this is very good. But here is chapter 6 of, uh, 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 verse 6 to 7. 
where God is saying, I regret making man. Here's a question to you, young person. Here's a question to you. What makes you, what makes you do the things that you are doing such that your parents regret the day they went into labor for you? What is it that you are doing that causes parents to regret? I want to ask the parents, what is it that you are doing today that may cause God to regret that you have lived so long many times? Christians, we hide behind Christianity. We hide behind verses that say, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up. But we are not removing the sin. We have sins that we like. We have compartmentalized sins. Oh Lord, take away my sin, but don't touch this one. We have sins that we cherish. We are keeping them as though they are kittens, but they are cubs. When a cub grows up, it does not become a cat. It becomes a lion. Yes, a lion is part of the cat family, but we all know the diet of a lion. Whatever you feed, will turn on you one day and devour you. We have times when we are saying to our children, hey, stop what you are doing. You are hurting us as a family. And to them, they are saying to you, you are old school. Let me turn the tables a bit. Some of the actions you are doing as parents, God is saying, hey, stop what you are doing. I am coming soon. And your response is, you are old school. This is a sad state of affairs. Why was God sorry? The earth was corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt. For all flesh was corrupted in his uh, dwelling upon the earth. Then God says, I will not only destroy man, I will destroy the animals associated with man. Every creeping thing, I will destroy it. Let me make something make sense to you. Who suffers the most? When a young man makes a girl pregnant, it is the innocent cow that was eating innocently while these two were doing what they are doing. Now that she's pregnant, it is that innocent cow eating innocent grass during the time to eat grass that is taken and used as a payment for what they were doing. It is that innocent Christ who died for our sins. When you and me are the accused, Christ takes the burden of our sins. God is love. He created all things to be happy. Now the evil and the violence of men was destroying all possibility of happiness. Men delighted in killing, in torturing both animals and people. The cries and the groanings of the oppressed and suffering rose up to the living creator. There are times where you think you are getting away with it, where you are making someone suffer where you feel like you, you are a boss by bringing down other people, the cries of the suffering are going up to the Savior. God saw man will soon destroy all the earth if he did not intervene. And God said unto Noah, At the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I destroy them from the earth. This is Genesis 6 verse 13. God saw that unless he intercepted to put a check on it, the growing tide of evil will blot out every man on the planet. What led to this horrible evil? The man turned away from his God. Now, when a man turns away from obeying God, he starts the process of death. When you stop following God, you start the process of death. And sometimes it may not be instant. Sometimes it may even be slow death. The time you move away from the Lord, you're starting the process of death. You're starting the process of moving closer to the devil. The race that lived before the flood was nothing like ever seen before. They, are, they lived hundreds of years. Their minds never forgot what they learned. And they were rich from the natural resources given to them by God. There was nothing beyond their capabilities. The heights of evil rose that we can't even imagine. Now, you must understand. These people used 100% of their brain. The most intelligent person maybe used 15%. These people used 100% of their brain and they never forgot what they learned. They started playing with things like DNA. They started mixing fish and human DNA. And this is where we get the hybrid called mermaids. 
They started mixing horses' DNA and human DNA. Now we've got the Saturius. They started mixing this dinosaur and that dinosaur, or these big animals and those big animals which we call dinosaurs. We, we, they started mixing them to get a hybrid. And yet God had commanded everyone unto its kind. Man was crossing the kinds. When God makes, he makes male and he makes female. Man crosses the two. The wicked race of Cain in Genesis 4. We saw the story of, 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 of the son of Adam who grew up to be arrogant, self-willed and rebellious. He became the first murderer on earth, brutally beating his own innocent brother to death because he had dared to urge him to obey God. He knew he deserved to die, but as an object lesson to the universe of what sin will do when it grows, God allowed him to live out his life. Now I tell you, it is now dangerous to profess to be a Christian in some places because it means death. Because of these things that Cain allowed to enter into him, these spirits that Cain allowed to enter into him, when you urge someone, my brother, you are going the wrong way, you will be killed for telling the truth. But alas, I say to you, I will rather die at the foot of the cross than to live in the presence of the devil. Cain married one of his sisters and moved away from his parents. There he built a city. He invented a form of worship contrary to the worship of the Creator. That included uh, idolatry. This is seen in Joshua 24, verse 14 to 15. Idolatry led to practices like killing and torturing in the name of worship. Today we see young boys being killed for the sake of worship. Young boys being killed for the sake of of money, young boys being killed in order to worship. I do not know what you are worshiping, but you are worshiping something. These spirits are present today as they were present then. Satan delighted in the race of Cain and he taught them many evils. There was a godly race that God raised for himself after the brother Abel was killed. And this was the race of Seth. You need to understand something here. Cain is living his life. The devil is delighting in Cain. And they are worshipping things, killing and torturing him for the sake of what seems to be worship. There was another race that was to be raised. The race of Seth. Although Adam and Eve had children, many children in the Bible, the Bible only zeroes in on certain ones. After the death of Abel, the rebellion of Cain, Seth was born and grew up to serve the Savior and the Creator. His descendants were called children of God. The descendants of Cain were called the son of man. I know there are so many people who say uh, it's angels who came to sleep with, 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 the, with the children of God. And, and then there were giants in those days. The children of God were from Seth. The sons of of men were the, 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 the sons and daughters of, of men were from Cain. So these children of God lived a more agricultural life in secluded areas to be away from the violence of Cain and their false worship. They gathered on the Sabbath to offer sacrifices and worship before the gates of Eden. Let me make something very clear to you. Lockdown or no lockdown, church closed or church opening, you've got to worship God on your own. You've got to be worshiping God on your own. Whether the situation permits or doesn't permit, you've got to send a prayer on your own. Prayer does not begin at the church. Prayer does not begin at, uh, in the four halls that are, are dedicated to you. Prayer begins in your heart, in your house. By the time you leave your house as a family, you're already a prayerful family. When you get to church, you're a prayerful family and you're a collective of prayerful families. There's no excuse for worship because these children, these grandchildren, were no longer in Eden. They were outside of Eden, but they still worshipped. There's no excuse for you young people. There's no, it is witchcraft 
for young people to say, I can't worship now, I will worship when I'm older. Older may never come. Older may never come. These children moved away from Cain's race, but as time passed, the women of Cain's race, as time passed, the women of Cain's race learned many seductive practices. The women of Cain's race learned many seductive practices. They learned to make themselves very appealing to the urges of men. And, 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 and they knew they couldn't get these men on fair. So they, they knew that these people are too, are too holy for us to get them. But holy as they are, they are still men. So they studied. And they wanted to make themselves more appealing. I wish one of these days we just spend time on what they did in order for them to be more appealing. When you use artificial means to identify as beautiful, when you use artificial means to look a certain way when you are not a certain way, they made themselves look lovely. They made themselves more appealing. And we are told that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of which they chose. Genesis 6 verse 2. The Bible says don't be unequally yoked to the non-believer. You need to yoke yourself with someone who believes the God that you believe. Let them bring prayer on their own to the, to the relationship. Let them bring worship on their own to the relationship. It's high time you call a spade a spade. We are sick and tired of people that come with nothing and take everything in the relationship. People who can't pray together but can flirt together. People who don't make time to call upon the name of the Lord to bless the relationship. The intermarriage brought apostasy. Genesis 6 tells us that as the godly race of Seth mingled and intermarried with the rebellious race of Cain, men became mighty in their deeds of evil. Giants in both stature and intellect, they pursued pleasure and lust until the state that was reached that we read about earlier. When you intermarry and you take this one's thing that he believes, you, you bring your thing that you believe, there's going to be a mingling of, of beliefs. But one thing I can tell you is the devil's belief will triumph because it seems that the children of man overtook the sons of God. Only a few persons still served God faithfully. And they, they had to dwell in secluded areas for refuge from oppression and persecution. But even that wicked time, we have an example of a man who lived so close to God that he was actually removed from the earth. He was taken to heaven and his name was Enoch. Enoch was Noah's great grandfather. He took a hold of the faith of the hand of God and he walked with God. We can do so too. No matter how evil the world is, you can be an Enoch. No matter how hard it is and young people are losing virginity left, right and center, you can purpose in your heart to remain pure. Not because people are approving you, but how can I do this in front of my God? You can remain pure. What things did Jesus point out about the people in the days of Noah? For in the days of Noah, they were be, the, the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. These are not wrong in themselves. But these them, but this is showing that these things were the focus of their lives. And they were, there was such an intensity that evil came and they did it continually. There's nothing wrong with marrying. There's nothing wrong with eating. But when it becomes your focus of life, you will find that you will break the Sabbath for a plate of food. Likewise, as it was in the days of Lot, 
They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lord went out of, the so of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them. Luke 17, verse 28 to 29. Let eating and drinking not be the focus of your religion. Let God not be confined as long as he gives me a plate of food. He's God. Whether he has given you, whether he has not given you, God is good all the time. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. In Matthew 20, 24, verse 38 to 39, the Son of Man will come like a thief in the night. Why did the people not know? Didn't God warn them? For 120 years, Noah faithfully preached to the world the message of the coming of the flood and the safety to be had in the ark. He was building at God's command with every blow of the hammer on that ship. He testified to his belief in the word of God and he took all the possessions that Noah had to build this ark. 120 years, the man preached the same sermon no one had seen rain before. Water would come out of the ground to water the ground. Everyone thought, this is a madman. Today we speak of Christ's second coming. Sermon after sermon after sermon. The preachers may differ, but the message is still the same. Some people are saying, we've been waiting for Christ to come. My mother was waiting for, my grandmother was waiting for Christ to come. When is he coming? I want to tell you, like a thief in the night, we never know when they are coming. But when they do come, we will wish we had put the security system. We would wish we had locked the door at night. Let me tell you something. The image of the kind of faith it took in the whole world that had never known rain and life seemed to continue normally was going to be their problem. Because, because they had never seen rain, this is impossible. This is the point that Jesus was making. In Sodom the day before the fire fell, you'd have thought it would continue forever. Life uh, rounds of affairs went as usual, including a few jokes about the preaching nutcase lot. If you had been in the cities and towns before the flood came, you would have been seen, you would have seen things moving as normally. In fact, later the people gathered abound and closed the ark and had a party threatening Noah. But they had been given evidence to back up what Noah and Lot were saying. Let me tell you something. Some people are making a party out of you when you tell them, I'm doing this for the Lord. I can't work on Sabbath for the Lord. They make a party out of you. I can't do ABC for God. I can't be faithful. How can you not be faithful? Who's not doing it? Every time you stand up for God, they're making a party. I say to you, my brother, my sister, you preach on that message because when the Lord shall come, he will judge. Let me tell you something. God gave evidence and this is what he did. Just the night before the fire fell on Sodom, a huge crowd was smitten blind as they tried to do violence on Lot's guests. And when the ark was finished and Noah invited the people to come for the last time, all at once, this is seen when God is speaking. He says, God, uh, Noah invited the people. They had been shown signs. There was a time for Lot that when they, they, they wanted to take the guests, he even offered these virgin daughters. They said, never. We want the men. Because they were tired of women, they now wanted to experience what it means to sleep with the man. Let me tell you some of these abominations. They are despicable to the Lord. And, 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 and when they are going to the door, they are smitten blind, but still... In their blindness, they still want to break down the door. You need to repent. When the Lord has freed you from sin, in your blindness, you need to move away from the sin. Mary of Magdala was said, who is your accuser? I, 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 I do not see them. I forgive you. But the Lord said, go and sin no more. Sin no more shows trueness of the repentant. When you repent... The repenter must show genuineness in the repentance. In the, in the, uh, 
when they repent, they must show genuineness so that when we look upon their lives and where the Lord has, has brought them from, the stage of repenting, the, 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 what they have done for them to receive this grace, where are they now? They should be a growth. If you are not repentative and you are hiding small granules of sin, you are like, like charcoal that is no more ambient. But when you throw a paper on it, it the paper starts catching fire. When you have granules of sin left in your heart, that repenter who is supposed to be repentative is questionable because you are still holding on to the thing that God wants to remove from you. Were they shown something great for them to believe? Yes. Yes, they were shown something great for them to believe. In an orderly manner, seven each of the clean animals identified in Leviticus went into the ark. People watched in horror. Was Noah right? Two each of the unclean animals went into the ark. Birds flew in flocks to enter the ark. Nature obeyed the master, but man would not heed. Could not people see? Could they not see? What is happening to the people? Could they not see that from this building of the ark was the work of God? Did they not know that animals and birds would not enter the, har the ark in perfect order, on their own accord, without the guidance of the divine hand. They might have known, but for 120 years, they were hardening their hearts. Can you not see today that a prisoner jailed for murder comes out a preacher? Can you not see that the prostitute saved from the streets comes out a preacher? Do you not see the word of God? Let me not even talk about other people. Have God not spoken to you? Has God not saved you? Has God not protected you when you were supposed to be judged? When you were supposed to be found out? Has God not protected you and given you some sort of dignity when you were guilty? If you don't believe the story of Noah, believe your story. Should you even be here today? You are here by the grace of of God. So when we say the Lord is coming again, he's coming again, not just for me, but for you. They asserted that if there were any truth of what Noah had said, the men of renown, the wise men, the prudent men, the businessmen, the great men would understand the matter. They had been training themselves to reject the truth. Now when an unmistakable evidence was given them, their hearts were so hard that they laughed it away. For seven days, the animals came led by angels, and Noah arranged them in their places. Then Noah made the last appeal and was rejected again. Now with his family and his belongings, he entered the ark. The one massive door no man could close, but a brilliant beam of light was seen streaking from the sky. And a mighty angel from heaven closed the door. Probation had ended for this rebellious race. A race that would play around with DNA to create creatures. A race that had trained itself to eat and drink in the presence of holy things. While at the ark, while Noah was building God's plan, they sat there, they mocked Noah, they mocked mocked the things of God. Today we have preachers who mock the things of God, who play with the things of God. We have preachers who claim that if they are not in if, if they are not in heaven, we are in hell. Today we have preachers who stand up and lead the church astray. We have members who follow the latest gospel and not the gospel of the Lord. Their faith was tried another seven days. I want to tell you, for those who are standing up to the truth and you're asking yourself, but why God is not answering? When Noah entered the ark, for seven days he waited. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. 
Noah thought to himself, maybe, was I wrong? But because Noah knew God, Noah had faith in God, because Noah had a relationship with God for seven days, it continued before. There was no sign of the coming disaster was seen. People celebrated and laughed outside the ark. All was sure now that Noah was a madman, safe within the ark. Noah and his family cared for the animals and waited. The seventh day dawned and clear once there was no sign. The seventh day dawned. But clear all at once, suddenly for the first time in history, the, the, the dark clouds gathered and lightning streaked across the sky. The, the, the wind howled like shrieks of avenging demons. The party around the ark broke off. Screams of terror fulfilled the air. Noah was right. The flood was here. Men saw their proud edifices of idolatry destroyed by fire from heaven before their very eyes. And then the rain came. That mansion that separated you from God. Then the rain came. That lovely car that separated you from God. Then the rain came. That little money you have that makes you have small houses, small houses, all the houses you can think of. Then the rain came. That little pride you have because you are using an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Then the rain came. That little pride because you managed to get a degree, a master's, a PhD. Then the rain came. All the certificates were drenched. All the money was lost. The rain was now here. But this is one fact. It was now too late. It was now too late. Water poured from the sky as the protective canopy that had sheltered the earth, making a tropical paradise, collapsed. Water shot out of the geysers from the ground. People scrambled to high places and struggled to hold on. The fish had no chance. The whales had no chance because when the geysers opened, the temperature of the water changed. Some people think, I wish I was a fish. I was going to swim. The water changed. The temperature changed. And as the water came down, the large uh, um, the human beings tied their children to large animals, hoping that the large animals would take them to safety. But there was a breakdown in communication. The animals ran in terror to the human beings in hope that they can do something for them. What would they have given for another chance of invitation from that crazy Noah? As the waters rose and the ark shifted and began to float. The Bible doesn't tell us where Noah's mother-in-law is. The Bible doesn't tell us where Noah's cousin is. The Bible doesn't tell us where Noah's father is. Where, 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 where. The Bible doesn't tell us where the relatives are. But I need you to understand something. There were some people that the Lord allowed to sleep before the flood came. There were some people that were allowed to sleep before the flood came. And this is what I want to tell you. When you lose good men, the Lord allows good men, good people to sleep before the flood comes. For they've made a decision. Anything after that may change them. So the Lord allows them to sleep. So sometimes you pray for that, for your dad to be well. But your dad calls upon the Lord and says, Lord, when you come, remember me. And we find dad just dies just like that and you have no answer. How come dad died? You're such a good man. It's because when the flood shall come, God would have solidified his decision and is now waiting for the blessing. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the son of man shall come. They knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Now I want you to understand that the ark was a ship of vision and was built by an amateur boat builder over 120 years. But the Titanic was a ship of dreams. 
It was built by professionals over just a few years. The ark carried eight people and a host of animals, yet the Titanic was loaded down with people acting like animals. The ark was used for one year and then discarded on the Mount of Ararat. The Titanic was only afloat for a few days, then rested 20,000 feet at the bottom of the icy Atlantic. The ark was built by hand of wood and joined with the rivets of iron, and the Titanic was built with iron, with wood within. The ark was designed and launched by God, and men and devils could not sink it. The Titanic's owners boasted that God himself could not sink it. So ends the proud schemes of man. Be ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 24, verse 44. A young lady who had been in love with a young man. And the young man said, if you want me to marry you, baby, I need to, I need to make a plan. I, I need to find money to, buy, uh, to pay bride price. I need to find money so that we can get married. Baby, I love you. And she says, I love you too. And he says, I need to go to the UK. And, 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 as, and she says, oh, but I'm going to be separated from you. Like, all you need is to have faith in me that I will never cheat on you. And I want to have faith in you that you will never cheat on me. He says, no, I love you too much to cheat on you. I will never do such a thing. And then the young man uh, bought his ticket and he came and embraced her and gave her a kiss on the cheek, on the cheek, on the cheek, gave her a kiss on the cheek and says, my, my bride, my future wife, I am going to work for us. So he went to the UK. First days he wrote letters, they came through. And then after a month, a month was skipped. After three months, month, those months were skipped. And after a year, there was no letter that came through. The young lady sat there despondent. Could she have been wrong? He had gone for three years now. Could she have been wrong? Maybe he has found someone else. She had been faithful. She had been, she had been looking after herself in anticipation that any time he would come back. So she decided, no, I'm no longer. I'm no longer looking after myself. I'll leave it. I'm tired of doing this. It is at that moment when after two weeks, after three weeks, the hair remained like that. She never cared. The smell, her aura was different now. The feet were never bathed, so they started cracking. And at that moment, at that time, she got to a point where she said, it's, the, it's all the same, what's the difference? I tell you, she heard a knock by the door one day. And when she heard a knock by the door one day, because it was any other day, every day, she went into the, 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 the passage area where the main door was. And as she opened the door, lo and behold, it was her lovely sweetheart. He had come, and it was a surprise. And now he had come to pick her up because he knew that she's always ready, she's always smart. He had come to take her and to go with her back to the UK. That the plane was leaving in 30 minutes. And they needed to leave now. And here she is. Uncombed. Not bathed. Looking like she's not ready. And she said to him, sorry, I didn't know you were coming. Can I please take a bath? Can I please clean myself? And he said, no. My love, you should have been ready. I told you to be ready. But now it's too late. I have to go. The Lord will come like a thief when we are not ready. But the time to change will be too late. We are seeing from Genesis right up to Genesis chapter 6. That is no longer the same. By the time we get to Revelation... You and me need to choose. Are we fulfilling prophecy with our actions? We need to choose which boat we are going in, the Titanic or the Ark. May God bless you. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to go through the, um, chapter 6, looking at what Noah, Noah did.
Some of us have no strength to resist the temptations that come before us. Give us power, give us strength. Some of us have no, no power to say no when the devil comes. Give us power, give us strength. We call upon your name as our Savior. Lord, I pray that you can be with everyone that has heard this message. In its simplicity, may someone repent and come home. I pray all this in grace and heaven's name. Amen. Oh, I'm going to go to the hospital.